Hey, peace world. Thanks for pressing play on another Pay Me No Mind sports and entertainment video. My name is Wood. Um, well, the shoe finally fell, and today it's been announced. It started, reports started coming out last night on different um, outlets that the Washington Redskins, that nickname, is, uh, is retired as of this morning. And the franchise in Washington, um, there's also reports that the new nickname has already been agreed upon or settled on. And uh, the only holdup is like some trademark, uh, you know, some, some trademark details that need to be put in place. And those things just can't be rushed through. Um, there were some different names out there that Snyder years ago had started some, you know, paperwork. I guess Warriors was for, was, was, there was some activity on Warriors for a, an arena league team or something, um, so on and so forth. But all that'll get settled out. You know, I saw the Red Wolves emerge. I saw, you know, people being fond of the Red Tails. I saw that one having a, a tough time, you know, being the winner. Um, I saw different things and, you know, I, Red red Wolves, Red Tails, Red Hawks, uh, I, I wasn't too attached to any of those, though I thought Red Tails would have been dope, um, especially understanding that three of the first, from what I understand, three of the first five uh, Tuskegee Airmen were from the Washington area. I thought that was pretty dope. But um, it looks like it could be this Warriors. Definitely not my favorite. Um, but, you know, some people are losing their minds this morning. Some people, you know, are uh, deeply disturbed by this. And they think that it opens Pandora's box for other team nicknames to be uh, challenged and potentially changed. And regardless, you know. I'm not going to lose a lot of sleep on it. I thought the, uh, I, I kind of hope that the, there was a way to save the logo on the helmet. That's gone. I am very fond of the burgundy and gold. Burgundy happens to be my favorite color. Uh, looks like that'll be the, the, the burgundy and gold will remain in place. Um, you know, as, as as a business or franchise, you know, a brand, you know, there's a certain responsibility that you have that's bestowed upon those entities to operate, earn money, and, and, and do what they do in this country. And, you know, for the people that want to, it's a cat on Facebook right now that's, that's taking huge L's and trying to hold on to Redskins, um, but, you know, that's him. I just think in this particular case, man, out of out of all sports, you know, in all universities, in high schools, you know, I, I know locally, I think there is in Ohio, I think there's one. I think is the Redskins. I can't remember St. Henry's. Um, one of the quarterbacks from the um, the Ohio State Buckeyes, the Hardings, is that their name? Hoying. I think they're they're from up there. Uh, came out of that high school, but um, in that school that's in Arizona or New Mexico or whatever, it's a Native American uh, high school, and their name is the Redskins. Um, all of that fine, but again, I just think um, when you're a part of the NFL, one of the one of the most influential. And one of the 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 uh, the richest, the wealthiest uh, businesses or industries in all of in in the country, you, you're talking about um, the commissioner, Goodell, earning what forty eight million dollars like two years ago for his salary, forty eight million dollars just to oversee the NFL. Multi-billion dollar TV contract. Um, there's, there's a certain level of responsibility in, 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 in that. And um, 
there's a certain level of expectation. And I, like I said, for me, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, I started wondering, you know, what kind of statement am I making in wearing this apparel? And I think it's easy for some to be to be attached to, you know, what's well, been like that since the 1930s. That's what it's always been. That's my my team name. I get all of that. But, you know, if you quit taking into consideration new information, you know, new sensibilities and whatnot, then that's on you. Now, I was watching this show last night. It might have been on 60 Minutes. But um, this monument, monument row that's in Virginia, Chartersville, that has all of these Confederate uh, statues in, this, in a row. Hence, you know, Monument Row. And I was, I was, I'm not so, I don't do history like I did in high school when, when, when I figured out I couldn't make good money in history. But they had this brother on there that was a, a professor at some school. I don't think it was, I don't think it was Richmond or, or UVA or whatever. But um, I'm with him. I don't think that you tear down all of these statues, although some of them, how enormous they are, you know, kind of they might need to be downsized a little bit because of what that uh, indicates. But um, this the, the dude was, you know, the brother was saying, you know, maybe it's some way to add on something new to those uh, monuments to tell the full story. And I just think here that's that's uh that's a that's an to me that's an acceptable way to move about with monuments. But for something like a team nickname, I don't think you have that same uh luxury. And I think also another thing here is that because the Native American community is something that we largely don't hear from, we don't see them represented, uh we kind of push them to the side a lot of times. Uh, so their voice here on this matter has somewhat been ignored. They don't even take the time to consider it, but to step in their shoes for a moment as a, as a, uh, as a five-year-old, seven-year-old Native American and to see people, non-Native Americans parading around as characters from your or figures from your culture, that's probably a bit of a, uh, like I said, and, and then I mentioned, people were outraged about Bomani uh, Jones's uh, Caucasians t-shirt. Nobody said anything on my video about that. But if, if people were outraged because Caucasians was on a shirt, to me, it's somewhat, it's not beyond the pale for Native American, a large number or percentage of Native Americans to say, I don't like it. It's not necessarily demeaning, belittling, whatever, whatever. I, I just don't like it. And, and like I said, another idea. I work, my, my uh, employer is in is in the automotive industry and the products that that we put out there they no longer have um they no, they no longer have ashtrays in the in, in in the vehicles in the models um not to say that a lot of people in the leadership and you know some stereotypes or maybe even facts about this community that's at the head of my organization, how they feel about smoking doesn't mean that their products support, you know, the use of tobacco. Now you got to go buy something, you know, there's some aftermarket stuff that you can, I don't even know if it's, it's, it's an accessory anymore. They deemed that cigarette smoking is, 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 is not something that they want to be associated with. Or they want their products to encourage people to do. That decision was made. So like I said, there's a decision for, I mean, there's a, an expectation, there's a responsibility in what you do um, 
and, and how you put your uh your brand, your product, your service out there to the public. And I just think here in 2020, uh, despite the fact to want the 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 number of people who want to sit here and try to hold on to the phrase redskin, um, there's just no there's just no place for it in 2020. So like I said, I'm not gonna lose any sleep over it. Uh, really quickly for the people that want to run out here with what's next, you know what? Um, your where you might struggle or have some blind spots or struggle with change and all the variables at play and all of this stuff. Um, it's not really that difficult to now chiefs, you know, if, if they want to change the chiefs and arrowhead stadium, I don't know. That's not really my business. Um, a lot of this stuff isn't really my business, but it doesn't take that hard. It, it doesn't take a genius to sit here and look at some of the, the, uh, on a case by case basis to see where there's some uh validity to offensiveness or ignorance or where a community might be marginalized or something but um you know running down here with any you know running out here with any any claim you know it's, it's just not going to work but again, this is a this is a country where you can voice your grievances, and if there's enough of a groundswell, and you can get enough people in the ranks and 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 build to some kind of, you know, critical mass. That you know that's one of the the benefits to the right to assemble, so, people can do that. Here in this particular case, I say today here on July whatever this is the thirteenth. Yeah, July 13th, I feel relieved that um this team, while it that was the first, that was the first independent decision that I made as a young, as a young boy. That was one of the first things that I looked at out into the, all the stuff in this world and said, Hey, you know, I was born in I I knew that I was born in Washington, DC. And my dad, being born in uh Pennsylvania, liked the uh, longtime fan of the Steelers. And so I said, well, you know, if that's what that's who you chose to be your team. Even though we were living in Ohio. I was like by that same rationale, I'm rocking with these dudes out here with this at the time Indian on their helmet with the with the burgundy and gold. That's my squad. I think I broke my dad's heart that day parting ways with the Steelers. Um, but. That's how, you know, that, like, that's my memory and my attachment to that name. But um, it, it, it is what it is. My name is Wood. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. You can still fight for ODC. Peace.